topic will be the epidemic within the pandemic, environmental factors, genetic influences, and what to tell the parents. Over to you, Dr. Shruti Nishant. Dr. Shruti Nishant is uh, our proud Arvindan Estin alumnus, and uh, she is the pediatric ophthalmology head at the MN Eye Hospital. Over to you, Shruti. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your kind uh, invitation and for having me here. So I'm quickly going to share my slide. I hope uh, my screen is visible. Yes, ma'am, your screen is visible. Okay. Okay, so today I'm going to be uh, talking, good morning everyone, on this very long topic, which is the epidemic within the pandemic. We're going to be discussing genetic influences, environmental uh, factors, and what to tell the parents. Um, I know this is a long title, so I'm going to be breaking it up into pieces just like any other good movie buff. So we're going to be going at it part by part. So the first part is how bad of it uh, as an epidemic in itself, myopia is right now, we're currently in the boom of a big epidemic. And we do know that by 2050, probably 4.8 billion is the number of predicted myopes. And in India, with this wonderful paper from uh, AIMS, uh, Dr. Agarwal and uh, Dr. Saxena, uh, we know that the uh, overall crude prevalence of myopia is going to be 7.5%, but it has already been proved to be uh, somewhere around 13% uh, in the earlier studies. Uh, this is just another uh, thing of what is the current prevalence of myopia and this was all before corona happened and so we're looking at anywhere between 10 to 65 percent but now comes corona and walks into our lives in 2020 and then you know that you know things are going to change so we do know that there is a certain trajectory happening and then corona might probably just bump it up and change the trajectory a little bit so what happened after Corona came? More than 160 countries have closed schools, uh, and uh, you know, children are out of school. They are probably physically less active. They have longer screen times and irregular uh, sleep patterns and less favorable diets. And this is, of course, going to throw up all their fitness and their psychological effect as well. Uh, so, post. COVID, what exactly happened? Quarantine myopia is happening and in, in my favorite term, COVIDopia. So what, what it is, is actually not much of studies is out yet, but as far as what we know, this is a new, uh, this is a uh, original article from JAMA, which was published, which said that the prevalence of myopia in China, this is a Chinese study, bumped up from 3.5 to 5.7% in 2015 to uh, almost 21.5% in 2019. It's almost a 400% increase in 2020. For seven and eight year old participants, this increase was also uh, considerable. The first one was below six years of age. So this, this was another study where they found out that uh, during COVID, uh, the children tended to have more myopia, but once the COVID was over and they had their next six month review, the uh, children tended to uh, go into a little bit of hyperopia and that's probably explained by the fact that they were in accommodative spasm during the time of lockdown. So again, food for thought, not many other studies that have come in, but uh, we're still waiting for good uh, studies post that. Now let's move on to part two, which is myopia genetics. Now this is a very vast topic, which is difficult to cover. We're going, uh, basically myopia can be of three types, like syndromic high myopia, which is an isolated entity and school myopia. Now syndromic myopia is easy to identify. They're going to have features. They're going to have genes associated, which are mapped already. High myopia as an isolated entity have been studied through linkage studies candidate gene studies, and recently next-gen sequencing. Now, high myopia follows a Mendelian kind of a, a pattern, whereas school myopia, which is the more common variant, is one that is a complex disorder. It's like diabetes, where you have a lot of uh, uh, factors that are environmental-based rather than genetic. However, we do have mapped certain morph polymorphisms through GWAS, which is uh, ge gene -y, uh, genetic uh, genome uh, association studies, microRNA studies, and gene environment interactions. Now, this is what I was talking about, syndromic myopia, where you have uh, syndromic forms which have mapped genes and their patterns. You have high myopia where up to now 20 myopia loci uh, have been uh, mapped. And this is the timeline of how many loci have been found out so far. And up to now, like 131 new loci have actually been mapped for high myopia. And uh, candidate gene studies are a new way of finding out uh, the pathway, like how the pathogenesis of myopia happens. And in this, they have found out that synaptogenesis and neural connectivity form an important functional property uh, of genes that are associated with high myopia. And this is a list of the genes that are associated with that. 
Now, coming on to genome-wide association studies, which is what is a more common variant seen in school myopia, these are the uh, huge number of, uh, you know, uh, single nucleotide polymorphisms that have been mapped. Now, the interesting thing here is that uh, what, what GWAS is basically, we take up a huge number of population with myopia and we kind of study the, the, the genetics that are similar in these groups and then we form the, uh, the polymorphisms and we tell them that these are associated with myopia. Now, these have been mostly done by three groups, which is the CREAM Consortium, the 23andMe, and the UK Biobank. Now, that is an interesting way of finding out the uh, single nucleotide polymorphisms. The next thing is the gene environment interactions, which is a very, very important uh, niche kind of a thing that is happening now, where they find out what environmental factor is related to genetic, uh, a genetic um, uh, link. So here they have found that high education subset uh, has been related to these kind of single nucleotide uh, polymorphisms. And another study that uh, found uh, that there was weak evidence for interaction with near work, I mean, association with 39 single nucleotide polymorphisms. But overall, we can say that the increased risk of myopia in children uh, having one myopic parent with an odds ratio of 1.87 and two myopic parents odds ratio of 2.40. But we still don't know whether it is the genes that are at play or the similar environmental influences and the way they mimic their parents, whether that is at play and that is still out um, to, for judging. So we, from this, we know that myopia has a very dense interplay between genetics and environment. And But it's, it's very safe to say that the genes here play a role as a bullet and the environment is the trigger. And as long as the bullet is loaded and there is no trigger, I would, most probably there's a very low chance of myopia happening. With the trigger, that's when myopia kicks in. So this was an interesting patient I had who was a high myope and he wanted to get married and he came in for genetic counseling. And this got me thinking that what, is there a role for genetic counseling in the future? Are more patients going to be coming in asking for whether they need to get their genes mapped? So because more and more of people are getting myopic, they're going to be marrying myopic people and then, you know, it's going to get propounded. So this is some food for thought and then we'll, we'll probably have to think about this uh, in the future. Now, moving on to part three, which is the environmental factors. We do know that these are all the modifiable environmental factors, outdoors, near work, diet, sleep, ambient light. And of course, there is the rural urban divide and the socioeconomic status, which we already know about. So it is safe to say that scleral remodeling forms the basic pathogenesis. And the main things that is the physiological changes that happens is the change in image quality, the mechanical strain, the acquired biochemistry. Now, image quality can be a blurred image. It can be because of poor illumination. The mechanical strain can be because of poor accom uh, excessive accommodation convergence, which causes a weakness of the muscles or because of inflammatory mediators. And the third is the poor nutrition, stress, and environmental issues. And all of this coupled with the genetic factor causes this scleral remodeling. So this has been proven in studies in a mouse model where you can see that um, in, my, in uh, myopic mice, where they have done monocular form deprivation, the collagen actually decreases over 21 days. So there is actual scleral remodeling. What is the effect of outdoors? We still don't know what exactly in outdoors works, but these are all the study parameters. The brightness of the ambient light, uh, I'm sorry, it's not blue light, it's violet light. The circadian rhythm of the eyes, the accommodation, the relaxation to the accommodation, the physical exercise that comes with it or the vitamin D. Now, all of this causes a release in the dopamine and causes scleral remodeling. So here they say that around 80 minutes of outdoor activities can inhibit uh, myopia progression by 30%. And the 6,300 lux of light density is good for the eyes. And uh, physical exercise augments and violet light also adds to it. Effect of near work is very good. They say that the odds of myopia increases 2% for every one diopter hour more of near work. And reading distance of less than 25 cent centimeters is worse. More than two hours daily is positively associated with myopia. Again, nutrition, the more obese the children, the more the uh, myopia. And they found recently that LED light has been found to have a higher prevalence of myopia than those using incandescent or fluorescent lights. Uh, children with lesser amount of sleep, uh, they have a higher odds ratio of uh, getting myopia than those who have more than nine hours of sleep. Now we come to the final part. What do we tell the parents? But really, it's not just the parents. It's a complete unity of several places because a child is exposed to several environments and all of this has to be taken care in order to uh, kind of start off with myopia advocacy. So when I talk about online classes, well, what I usually tell is visual hygiene. Classes, bigger screens, bigger working distances, frequent blinking, 
sitting near a window, good ambient illumination, enlarged font size, 20-20-20 rule, good posture, and monitored outdoor breaks. We ask the parents to monitor their outdoor breaks. And in terms of lifestyle changes, we ensure the parent has to give them a daily proper routine. And with outdoor time, good physical activity, sleep, hydration, and a good diet. And of course, one should not lose out on psychological help where needed. So advocacy is very important. Prevention is always better. Talk to all the parents. And I always uh, uh, blindly tell all parents, irrespective of what condition they come for, from infancy right up to 15 years, I talk about outdoor time. Screen them early, as young as two years, three years, however soon you want to. Make it very tailor-made based on the age of the child, the parental myopia, early hyperopia, demanding in schoolwork, children who have demanding schoolwork, and children who have poor access to outdoors. So make it custom-made. Uh, and also, uh, having... So to sum it up, the myopia boom is definitely going to be amplified by COVID. Scleral remodeling is the primary pathogenesis. Preventive advocacy is the way to go. Environmental factors are more impactful than genetics. And customized myopia control is the future of this. So thank you so much, uh, Dr. Minakshi, for giving me this opportunity and AIOC for hosting this. Thank you. Thank you so much, Duthi. And again, what a fantastic talk. And uh, so no longer is myopia something that you can just write a pair of glasses and uh, tell the patient to be on their way. There is so much time, chair time, that is going to be in the future. There is going to be uh, genetics involved, uh, questionnaire perhaps of all the activities, environment, outdoor. This just, it's going to be, uh, it's exciting times ahead something for which we thought nothing can be done. Uh, but there's a lot of scope, a lot of scope uh, in the future. And once again, thank you so much.